the decussation of the anterior commissure. So you're seeing the upper part of the fornix and the lower part of the fornix. The difference, the upper part of the fornix would contain the septohippocampal fibers. The lower part of the fornix actually has the fibers that are eventually bound for the rest of the hypothalamus and the mammillary bodies. Okay? Um, again, there's a lot of structures that we've been pointing at. I want to start point at the things that are a little, a little bit newer. So a very, very uh, a definite difference right here would be uh, 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 number 22. What is number 22 pointing at? That's the hippocampus. Then what we have over here is, um, here is still the, uh, uh, we still have the fornix here and here. And what is just below the fornix over here? The mammillary bodies. So what are we starting to have formed up over here? What's the word? The AV nucleus of the thalamus. The AV nucleus of the thalamus, which of course gets a very large input from where? The mammalothalamic tract coming from the mammillary bodies. And it's also getting input from the fornix. Okay? And here we can see that with the mammalothalamic tract coming up, going to the AV nucleus of thalamus. What thalamic nucleus is in here? Yeah. Yep. Okay, very good. The mammillary bodies. We now are seeing the optic tract on its way to the La uh, lateral geniculate body, and what are we seeing here with the internal capsule? It is starting to turn. Yes? Can you repeat the structure you said previously, the one right before this? I, I didn't catch it. The subthalamic nucleus. There was no subthalamic nucleus. No, the Oh, yeah. this nucleus yeah. is the dorsomedial nucleus in the thalamus. Got it. Okay, you. this is the mammalothalamic tract. This is the optic uh, the optic tract, this is the internal capsule, but now what is starting to happen is we're getting the cruz cerebri here, and, um, okay, so, and then, what are some other things that we want to see here? Here is the fornix, in both parts, the furthest part away, we still have the hippocampus, And the other point I wanted to make here, I'm trying to look at. I think that that's okay. Can you, can you see the amygdala here? Okay. Medial temporal lobe. You think at a, 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 a sort of a rostral area. Let's say the rostral second fifth. And then you have the caudal third, fourth, and fifths of the medial temporal lobe. You're going to have two limbic nuclei. One of them will appear, and then the other will appear. They won't, both won't appear at the same time. So if you see hippocampus on a caudal section, in all, what you must say to yourself is I can't see the amygdala because the amygdala is rostral to me. If you see the amygdala on that caudal section, you can't see the hippocampus because the hippocampus is caudal to me. So they're in the same zone on a coronal section. No, it's a very good question because this is why what I would then suggest that you take is a horizontal section low enough so that you can capture the amygdala and then the hippocampus, okay?
It's what you can see on the two-dimensional section that you happen to be looking at. Can you say the same thing with the uh, basal ganglia? How they're three-dimensionally positioned? Okay, uh, I think the way um, there have been some clear, I think there was that sort of Georgia O'Keeffe sort of drawing of the ventricular system where you see the horns of the lateral ventricle going into the body and then the posterior. So when you look at the anterior horn and in the body, what you're basically going to see just lateral to it, of course, is the head and body of the chordae. Then lateral to that, you will see the internal capsule. And then lateral to that, you'll see the putamen. And as you move more cordally, you'll then see the globus pallidus. But then what happens as we move quarterly, the putamen gets smaller and smaller much quicker, the chordae gets smaller, but it's, but it's still there throughout the entire extent, and eventually the globus pallidus, the telencephalon poops out. Yeah. Did I explain that to you? Okay. Is that at the, you know, and again, Listen, what I think you can probably do, and I'm sure somewhere on a YouTube, is literally do that as you march through the uh, thing to see this, uh, to see this appear and then disappear as you move quarterly. Okay, and then of course horizontally it's easy because you see the big chordae first, then you'll start to see the putamen and then eventually the globus pallidus as you get more and more inferior. Um, so like here, look at this. If you think back around C3, C4, you had a huge chordate and and now what do you have? The largest section on here is the globus pallidus. Look at the size of the globus pallidus compared to the putamen, compared to the chordae. Okay? As we move quarterly. Okay? And I really think around C, if you notice here, I stopped at C8 because what started to happen? On C9 and 10, and you were the uh, you were the intrepid person who walked up, where we basically saw literally a horizontal section of the uh, of the brain or an oblique thing, where we saw an upside down midbrain. Okay. So now we reorient ourselves and we look at horizontal sections, and in the hor and. Here again, we're in an upper horizontal section. So you have to basically go and ask. Now, obviously, if you remember, way back on the first uh, class, I had you do a thought experiment when we looked at the superior surface of the brain, and I asked you if you took the two cerebral hemispheres and opened up and looked into the longitudinal fissure, what would you see? You would see the corpus callosum. So here is a horizontal cut that's just below the corpus callosum. So what you're basically, you're still seeing the rostrum and, uh, and the caudal part of the corpus callosum, but the corpus callosum itself is above us. So what you're now starting to see is the emerging anterior and posterior portions of the lateral ventricle, but what you also see is the fiber tract of the, of the, uh, of the, um, uh, of the fornix. Then what you're seeing, because just above you is you have the pre and the post central gyri, and now they are getting fibers in the, uh, uh, in the pre central gyrus that are leaving the precentral gyrus, so we have the anterior limb of the internal capsule is going to be doing what? It's going to be mostly uh, motor fibers, 
whereas the posterior limb of the internal capsule are incoming fibers coming in from the BPF. Okay? So there is the there is the internal capsule. Here is the fornix. Here's the uh, 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 anterior uh, the anterior horn. Here is the posterior horn. And then what we have here is the chordae. Then we have the internal capsule, and we have the putamen. The putamen is still small because we're so superior, and we're not seeing any, of course, not seeing any globus pallidus. But what you can see really here in a very nice extent is the external capsule. Then you see the claustrum. Then you see the extreme capsule. And then you, what you can see is the insula right here. <coughs> then we move here, and now you can really see your anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. You can see the chordae. You can see the internal capsule. You can see the putamen. And now, what you're looking as you move quarterly is you can see the encapsulated AV nucleus of the thalamus. Why is that important? When we think about horizontal sections, what are we going? We're going from superior to inferior. How did we divide up the thalamus? We divided up the thalamus into 10 nuclei and uh, three general areas, the dorsal tier nuclei, the ventral tier nuclei, and then the accessory nuclei, which are more caudal. So when we're in a superior horizontal section, we should be seeing the dorsal tier nuclei. So of course what we see here is the AV and then behind this is the DM nucleus. And then we see some lateral nuclei. It's not entirely clear which ones they are. Then, now, as we move back, we then have this boomerang-type structure, which is a set of fibers emerging from the hippocampus. And those fibers are what? Fan-like and emerging from all of the four areas of the hippocampus, and so they are called the fimbria. And then the fimbria, those fibers come together to form a tight tract that we call the fornix, which we saw above us. Okay, so now I will move a little bit further. And now, again, we still, we have a number of things here that we start to see. We're now, we have moved down enough so that we're not seeing that much of the ventricular system. Not the, the body is above us, the fornix is above us, the anterior horn, even though it is, it runs deep, is, is now almost below us. So now what do we start to see here? We still see a large putamen, a much smaller chordate, and now what is emerging here is the zona externa and zona interna of the globus pallidus. We then have the internal capsule as it's plunging uh, down inferiorly. And now what we can see out over here is uh, here's part of the hippocampus. And now what we're starting to see is some accessory thalamic nuclei. So we're seeing the pulvinar here. What we still can see very clearly here is we have the, uh, the putamen, then the external capsule, a much larger claustrum, the extreme capsule, and we see the insula. The other two things, the other three things that are of interest here is we've moved deep enough 